Yeah. 
grateful to you all. Ave. Come here, my child. I want to talk to you. Yes, about last night, Reverend Mother. I was on my knees most of the night because I was late. And after you had been so kind with giving me permission to leave. Oh, it's not about your being late, Maria. I must have awakened half the abbey before Sister Sophia heard me and opened the gate. I don't believe many of us were asleep. Many of us were worried that you had gotten lost. And to be lost alone at night on that mountain. Reverend Mother, I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain that brought me to you. Oh, when I was a little girl, I'd come down the mountain, climb up a tree, and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work and hear them singing on the way to Vespers. Many times I went back up that mountain in the dark, singing the whole way. And that brings me to another transgression. I was singing yesterday. I was singing without your permission. Maria, it is only here in the Abbey that there is a rule about singing. And that's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margareta has always reminded me, too late, after I started singing. Mm -hmm. And the day that you were singing in the garden at the top of your voice? Oh, Mother, it was that kind of song. Mm -hmm. When you saw me in the window, you stopped. Yes, and that's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind, too. Wish you hadn't stopped. <laughs> I used to sing that song when I was a child, but I just can't quite remember. Please. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, red copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Green colored ponies and crisp apple strudel, doorbells and sleigh bells and shoes no renewal, wild leaves that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my
even if it is hard to accept. Even then. Maria, the dress you wore when you came to us, is it still in the roaming room? Oh no, Mother, I'm sure that it was given to the poor. Sister Margaret always said to me, enter the abbey, our worldly clothes. Reverend Mother, why do you ask? Maria, it seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Leave? Leave here? Oh no, Mother, please no. Only for a short while. Don't send me away. This is what I want. This is my life. But are you ready for it? Perhaps if you go out into the world, you will come back to us and we will know what we expect of you and that we do expect it. I know what you expect, Mother, and I'll do it. I promise. Maria. If it is God's will, where am I to go? There's a family. There is a family with seven children. Oh, you like children. You're very good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? Captain Von Trapp expects you this afternoon. He's a fine man and a brave one. He received the Maria Teresa Medal for bravery in the Adriatic. A captain of the Navy, oh, Mother, would be very strict in not being sent to his battleship. God bless you, Maria. Reverend Mother, have I your permission to sing? Yes, my child. Yes, sir? I was calling the housekeeper and she didn't answer. Do you know why? Sometimes she doesn't hear us, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I was answering the telephone, sir. Good day, sir. We're happy to have him home. Why did the last governess leave? Oh, no. She just said, I've had enough of this, and walked out. Why? Was Louisa playing tricks again? Putting toads in her bed? She didn't complain of that, sir. Well. We have another one coming today, and this one can't walk out. Oh? She's coming from Nonberg Abbey, with orders to stay until September. Oh, I hope you're home for a time, sir. Just until tomorrow. The telephone call, is it for me? 
No, sir, it was for France. There was a telephone call from Vienna before you arrived. A Frau Schrader. I have the number in the pantry. I know the number. Oh, I shall be back in about a month with some guests. Yes, sir. Do you know how many, sir? Just two. Herr Detweiler. Ah, Detweiler. And Frau Schmidt. Frau Schrader. Who wanted me on the telephone? Oh, it was the post office. They have a telegram for you. It will arrive at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock? Oof, God. That gives me five hours to be nervous. <laughs> And with that scatterbrain boy delivering telegrams. Well, that is one thing they are saying. If the Germans did take over Austria, we'd have efficiency. Oh, Franz, don't let the captain hear you say that. <sighs> he never used to whistle for us when his wife was alive. He's being the captain of a ship again. But I can't bear being whistled for. It's humiliating. In the Imperial Navy, the bosom always whistled for us. But I wasn't in the Imperial Navy. Too bad. You could have made a fortune. Oh! <laughs> You are Fräulein? Maria. Maria Rainer. Now, Fräulein, as to your duties here, would you mind stepping over there? Before the children meet you, you will put on another dress. I haven't any other dress. When we enter the Abbey, our worldly clothes are given to the poor. What about this one? The poor didn't want this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you would call a worldly dress? It belonged to our last postulate. I would have made myself a new dress, but I wasn't given time. I can make my own clothes. Good. I will see that some material is given to you today, if possible. Now, you will be in charge of my children. There are seven of them. You will find out how far they have progressed in their studies and carry on from there. Each morning will be spent in the classroom. Each afternoon, they march. You will see that at all times they conduct themselves with decorum and orderliness. The first rule in this house is discipline. Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. This is my orderly, my butler, the new governess, Fräulein Maria. Yes, sir. <laughs> that is the executive officer, Frau Schmidt, the housekeeper, Fräulein Maria. Please see that her room is ready. Yes, sir. Well, I shall now leave you with the children. You are in command. Pardon me, sir. I don't know how to address you. You will call me Captain. Thank you, Captain. I forgot to return this whistle, Captain. I won't need it, Captain. Now you're? I'm Liesel. I'm 16 and I don't need a governess. I'm glad you told me. We'll just be friends. I'm Friedrich. I'm 14. I'm a boy. <laughs> boy? Why, you're almost a man. I'm Brigitte. You didn't tell me how old you are, Louisa. I'm Brigitte. She's Louisa and she's 13 years old. And you're smart. I'm Nana and I think you're just the ugliest one I ever saw. <laughs> Brigitte! You mustn't say a thing like that. Why not? Don't you think it's ugly? If I did think so, I wouldn't say so. I'm Kurt. I'm 11. Almost. That's a nice age to be. 11. Almost. I'm Martin, and I'm turning 7 on Tuesday, and, I'm on, and I want a blue bicycle. Blue is my favorite color, too. And you're Gretel. I'm going to tell you something. I've never been a governess before. How do we start? So you mean you don't know anything about being a governess? No. Well, the first thing you have to do is to tell Father to mind his own business. <laughs> no, Lisa, don't. I like her. What's in here? My guitar. But what did you bring this for? For when we all sing together. We don't, don't sing. sing. Of course you sing. Everybody sings. What songs do you know? You don't know any songs. No? No songs. Well, um, now I know where to start. I'm going to teach you how to sing. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi.
by mixing them up. Like this. So do la fa mi do re. Now you do it. So do la fa mi do re. So do la ti do re do. So do la ti do re do. Now let's put it all together. Some people think we ought to be German. 
they're getting pretty upset at people who think otherwise. They're getting ready to. Let's just hope your father stays out of trouble. Don't worry about father. He was decorated for bravery. The only one I worry about is his daughter. Me? Why? How old are you, Liesl? Sixteen. What's wrong with that?
certainly this is already the prettiest dress I've ever had. I hope the captain likes it. I want to ask him for more material. More? Oh, not for me, for the children, for play clothes. <laughs> the Von Trapp children never play. The captain doesn't like them to get dirty. But they're children. They have to climb trees and roll around in the grass. Think of all the rocks and caves. The captain believes the best form of exercising is marching. The children will continue to march. I hope you find your room comfortable. Oh, yes. There will be new curtains hung in the window in the alcove. But these curtains are very good. There will be new curtains. Will the captain be away long? I don't know. Of course, he has to come home every time he hires a new governess. Sometimes I think the children run off the governesses just so that they can see their father. He must want to see them, too. Ever since his wife died, they remind him too much of her. Oh, you won't be using that. You can put that away. Why? The captain won't allow music here. He won't have music. And he used to love music. There were wonderful evenings here. His wife would sing, and he would play the guitar and the violin. But now he shoved that all out of his life. <coughs> That's just wrong. Wrong for the captain and wrong for the children not to have music. Well, it will work out. The captain may marry before the summer's over. Well, that changes everything. They'll have a mother again. Yes, it will. It looks like it's going to rain. You should shut your window. Dear God, now I'm going to be here on a mission. I must help the children learn to love their new mother and prepare them to win her love so that she will never want them to leave her. I pray that this become a happy family in my sight. God bless the captain. God bless Lisa, Friedrich, Louisa, Brigitte, Martin, Little Gretel, and oh, I forgot the other boy's name. What's his name? <laughs> well, God bless what's his name. God bless the Reverend Mother, Sister Margareta, and everybody at Mount Brook Abbey. And now, dear God, about Liesel. Help her to know that I'm her friend. Help her to tell me what she's up to. You're not going to tell me, are you? And help me be understanding that I may guide her footsteps in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was out for a walk, and somebody locked the doors earlier than usual, and I didn't want to wake everybody up, so when I saw your window was open, you're not going to tell Father, are you? Did you climb that trellis to get up here? That's how we always got into this room to play tricks on the governance. Louisa can climb it with a toe in her hand. <laughs> Lisa, were you out walking all by yourself? You know, if we wash that dress up tonight, no one will notice tomorrow. Then all of this will just be between you and me. You can put this on. Now, take your dress in there, put it soap in the bathtub, then come back out and sit down and we'll have a talk. I told you today I didn't need a governess. Well, maybe I did.
Franz, did you tell Herr Detweiler we're having coffee out here? Yes, sir. Herr Detweiler is still on the telephone. Franz Schrader. Oh, thank you. No sign of the children, Franz? Not yet, sir. Georg, those mountains, they're magnificent. Yes, they're not like any other mountains. They're friendly. <laughs> Look, you see that green stretch of wood? When the wind moves through it, it's like a restless sea. And that sweet little village. Well, that's not a village, that's a town. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. It's fun being with you. You're quite an experience for me. You're quite an experience for me, too. Somewhere in you, there's a fascinating man. Occasionally, I catch a glimpse of him. And when I do, he's exciting. Exciting? I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you better now that I see you here. You know, you're a bit like those mountains. Except that you keep moving. How is it you can be away from this place as much as you are? Perhaps I've just been searching for a reason to come back here to stay. Georg, I like it here very much. Max can't still be on the telephone. I know he's desperate about getting singers for the Kaltzberg Festival, but... You like it here? Oh, we have to spend some time in Vienna. I have Heinrich's estate to look after. I thought that was a corporation now. It is, and I'm president. You? President of a corporation? After all, I managed Heinrich's affairs for years before he died. I just can't see you sitting behind a desk. Oh, yes. I wear a business suit and I smoke a big cigar. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. Eric Detweiler would like his coffee. While he's telephoning, he just finished. I'm sorry it took so long. Any luck? How would you like this for the Goldsberg Festival? the finest choral group in Austria, the greatest mixed quartet in all Europe, and the best soprano in the world. Max, that's something I'd love to hear. So would I. <laughs> all I've got up till now is a basso who isn't even profundo. <laughs> Max, you always come up with a good festival concert. And why? Because my motto is never start out looking for the people you might not, you wind up getting. That's why I've been telephoning Paris, Rome, Stockholm, London. On Georg's telephone. How else could I afford it? Well, why am I up here? Uh, I had hoped it was because you liked me. <laughs> of course I like you. Why shouldn't I like you? You live like a king. You have an excellent wine cellar. Max! I like rich people. I like the way they live. I like the way that I live when I'm with them. Speaking as a... Is there a cathedral nearby? That's our abbey, Nonberg Abbey. Do they have a choir? A beautiful one. Good. These next few days, I have to listen to sailorbuns and choirs and quartets and all these things. You'll be here for meals, won't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> it was in a town just about that size, Botsman, where I discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1930, they won the festival, became very famous, toured all over the world. Oh, yes. Whatever became of them? By the time their voices changed, they were rich enough to live in America. <laughs> Who lives in that dilapidated old castle down there? Rumpelstiltskin? That's Elberfeld, the oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. I'd like to meet all your friends. Georg, why don't you give a dinner for me while I'm here? Nothing very much, just something lavish. I wouldn't know whom to invite. Today it's difficult to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. This isn't a good time to make enemies. Let's make some friends. I wonder what's happened to the children. You're not worried about them, are you? Well, they should have been here to greet you. Well, it couldn't have been an intentional slight because they haven't met me yet. Forgive me, I'll try to find them. Elsa, have you made up Georg's mind yet? Is he going to marry you? Oh, yes. He hasn't admitted it yet. There seems to be something standing in his way. You don't know what it is? No. I do. What? It's very simple. It's money. Money? Yes. He's rich, and you're rich. In 
all the famous love affairs, the lovers have to struggle. In garret rooms or way upstairs, the lovers starve and snuggle. They're famous for misfortune, which they seem to have no fear of. While lovers who are very rich, very seldom hear of. No sign of them anywhere. No little shark, do you shock with me? We do not flee from the mortgagee. Nary a care in the world have we. How can love survive? of nothing you have got. How can love survive? No rights for us on the top of a bus in the face of the freezing breezes. You reach your goals in your comfy old rolls or in one of your Mercedes. Captain Bontrax's children. 
My children have always been a credit to my name. But, no, they haven't been. They've been unhappy little marching machines. I don't care to hear about my children from you. You've got to hear from someone. You're not home long enough to know them. I said I don't. I know you don't, but you've got to. Take Liesel. She isn't a child anymore. If you keep treating her as one, you're going to have a mutiny on your hands. And Friedrich, he's afraid to be himself. He's shy, he's aloof. Friedrich needs you. He needs your confidence. Don't tell me about my son. Brigida could tell you about him. She could tell you about a lot of things if you got to know her, because she notices everything. She always tells the truth, especially when you don't want to hear it. Kurt, he's sensitive. He's easily hurt. And you ignore him. You brush him aside the way you do all the children. I'm not finished yet. Louisa wants to have a good time. You've just got to let her have a good time. And Martin, I don't know about yet, but someone has to find out about him. And little Gretel just wants to be loved. Oh, Captain Love Gretel, love them all. They need you. Stop. Stop it. You will gather your things and return to the Abbey as soon as you can. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said those things, not the way I said them. And once you're gone, they'll be...
captain was pleased. He's asked me to stay on with the children. Oh, you're staying on? Until September. September? Then I return to the Abbey. The Abbey? I'm going to be a man. Oh. How nice. <laughs> when you get back to the Abbey, think of us. I would pray for you.
effort. That's how that's done. <laughs>
Elsa, they're extraordinary. Fräulein Maria taught them to do it. I've been looking all over Austria for something like this, and I find for the festival, and I find it here. Wait a minute, Max. A singing group of seven children in one family. Max, Georg didn't even want them to sing in front of the guests tonight. I had to persuade him. Ah, then you have influence. You must talk to him. Max. Elsa, this is for Austria. And it wouldn't do me any harm.
Maria. Are you in love with Captain Von Trapp? I... I don't know. I don't know. Tell me about it, child. Brigitte said that I was. She said that her father was in love with me. And then he was there. And we were looking at each other. And oh, I could hardly breathe. Then I knew I couldn't stay. But do you like him, Maria? Oh, yes. Did you let him see how you felt? Oh, if I did, I didn't know that I did. That's what's been torturing me. I was there on God's errand. To have asked for the captain's love would have been wrong. I don't know, Mother. I do know this. I am ready at this moment to take the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. Maria, the love between a man and a woman is holy, too. When you first came to us, you told me that you remembered your father and mother before they died. Re do you remember? Were they happy? Oh, yes, Mother. They were very happy. Oh, Maria, you were born of their happiness, of their love. What you must find out is, how does God want you to spend your love? I have pledged my life to God's service. I have pledged my life to God. Maria, if you love this man, it does not mean that you love God less. You must find out. You must go back. Oh, don't ask me to do that. Please, let me stay here. Maria, these walls were not meant to shut out problems. You must face them. You must find the life that you were born to live. How do I find it?
Please, will you give us a key? Problems? 
You've got to face them. Oh, I've got so much to talk to you about. We have a lot to tell you, too. I'm sure you have a great deal to tell me. I guess the most important thing is that Father's going to be married. Married? Yes. To Frau Schrader? Are you sure? Yes, he just told us. He told us himself. We found him! Luisa. Luisa, Brigitte, boys, let's all go to the nursery. You've come back? Yes, Captain. You left us without any explanation whatsoever, without even saying goodbye. It was wrong of me. Forgive me. Why did you do this to us? Tell me. Oh, please don't ask. Anyway, the reason no longer exists. Then you are back to stay. Oh, only until you can make arrangements for another governess. Oh no, the children have missed you very much. I miss... Everybody's missed you. Nothing was the same while you were away. Everything was wrong. But I... We'll talk about it later. Go up to the children now. Maria. A new dress? We have an postulant. <laughs> I know I'm right, Max. We'll find him and ask him. I'll take your word for it, Elsa. Georg, settle this for Max and me, will you? How far down the mountain does your property go? Can you make out that stone wall? That's the property line. You see? I didn't argue about it. I know, and that's what makes me furious. I don't like to win without a fight. Very good, Pilot. Fine book on, you had a long distance call from Berlin. Who could be calling me from Berlin? They said you'd know who it was. Ah, thank you, Franz. Georg, what were we just talking about? Max, this isn't the first call you've received from Berlin. Georg, you know I have no political convictions. Can I help it if other people have? Let's not stir that up again. The Germans have promised not to invade Austria. Max knows that. Then why does he bother to answer those calls from Berlin? Because if they don't keep their promise, I want to have some friends among them. Naturally. Oh, you agree too. Georg, this is the way I look at it. There was a man who was dying. They were giving him his last rites. They said to him, do you renounce the devil and all his works? And he said, at this moment, I prefer not to make any enemies. Georg, if they, if they should invade us, would you defy them? Yes. Do you realize what could happen to you? To your property? To your children? To everyone close to you? To Elsa? To me? Well, what will you do if they come? What anyone with any sense would do, just sit tight and wait for it all to blow over. And you think it will? One thing is sure. Nothing you can do will make any difference. Don't look so serious, darling. Take the world off your shoulders. And relax. You do attract a dewy-eyed idealist. Today you have to learn to be a realist. You may be bent on doing deeds of daring do. But up against a shark, what can a herring do? Be wise, compromise. Compromise and be wise. Let them think you're on their side, be not committal. I will not bow my head to the men I despise. You won't have to bow your head, just stoop a little. Why not learn to put your faith and your reliance on an obvious and simple fact of science? If you even try, so I know. 
to get those two together? Who? The Mother Abbess and Brigitte. An ordinary couple is all we'll ever be. For all I want of living is to keep you close to me. To laugh and weep together while time goes on its flight. To kiss you every morning and to kiss you every night.
1938. Look right here. The Von Trapp family singers. And here are all your names. Weasel, Friedrich, Louisa, Kurt, Brigitte, Martin, and Gretel. Why am I always lost? Because you're the youngest. Oh. Now, Weasel, I am depending on. You must have all the children ready to go. Can I interrupt you, please? The gall lighted. Here, and he wants to know why we're not flying the new flag yet. I, I tried to explain to him. Keep quiet. When is the captain returning? Uh, who knows? When the man is on his honeymoon. This is no time for joking. It has been four days since the arms loose. This is the only house in the province that is not flying the flag of the Third Reich. You mean the flag with the black spider on it? Brigitte. Do you permit such remarks in this house? Who are you? I am Maximilian Detweiler, first secretary of the Ministry of Education and Culture. That was in the old regime. In the old regime, I was third secretary. Now I'm first secretary. <laughs> Good. Then you will tell them to fly the flag. Captain Von Trapp would never, <clears throat> I mean, I only take my orders from Captain Von Trapp. You will take your orders from us. And so will the captain. Hi! Hi. Why was he so cross? Oh, honey, everyone's cross these days. Is Father going to be in trouble? He doesn't have to be. The thing to do these days is to just get along with everybody. Now, these will make sure that you have all the children on the bus at 11 o'clock day after tomorrow. Uncle Max, are you sure this is going to be all right with Father? He'll be pleased and proud. Please, do you think so? Brigitte, don't you trust me? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, the bus leaves at 11 o'clock. Fräulein Liesel, see what I have here. That's father's luggage. Yes, they're back. Uh, Liesel, they'll, they'll have such a lot to tell us. Let's not be in any hurry to tell them anything. climbing up the stairs to say goodnight to you. We missed hearing you sing. You came back just in time to hear us sing. Look, Father, I'm going to be in the Culture Festival for any night. Let me see that. Max, are you responsible for this? Yeah, I've just been waiting to talk to you about it. You can't talk your way out of this one. Children don't sing in the festival. Well, maybe 
a reflection on Austria. And it wouldn't do me any good. Maria, I've always known that you loved us children. And now I know that you love Father, too. I do, Lisa. I love him very much. How do you know for sure? Because I don't think first of myself anymore. I think first of him. I don't know how to spend my life.
What's happening? Stormtroopers? Maria, this is just what I was afraid of. Oh, Max, you stay with Georg. Uh, I need the children. Lisa, let's find the children. Quickly. This way, Admiral. We can talk in here. Admiral von Schreiber, may I present Herr Detweiler? Max, I believe you know Herr Zeller. Gentlemen, would you care to sit down? We are here on business. Captain Von Trapp, a telegram was sent to you three days ago. I have just received it. I've been away. I've only been home a half hour. The captain has just returned from his honeymoon, sir. Congratulations, Captain. Thank you, sir. Your record in the war is very well remembered by us, Captain. Very good to hear you say that, sir. Let's get to the point, if you don't mind. In our Navy, we hold you in very high regard. That explains why I'm here. Having heard no response to our telegram, the High Command has sent that me That is very flattering, sir, but I've had no time. I am here to present you with your commission. I am deeply conscious of and the And you are to report immediately to the naval base at Bremerhaven. Immediately? Oh, I'm afraid that would be quite impossible for you, Georg. Admiral, may I present my wife, the Baroness von Trapp? Madam. What I mean, sir, is we're going to be singing in the Kaltzberg Festival Friday night. You see, the von Trapp family singers here in the program. It's been arranged by the Ministry of Education and Culture. Friday night. This is Wednesday. That's only a matter of two days. It might be possible. You could report to Bremerhaven by Monday. Admiral! Is there a telephone I can use? This way, Admiral. If there is any question, perhaps adding the weight of my voice would settle things. It lists here only the names of the children. It says the Von Trapp family singers. I'm the head of the Von Trapp family. It's hard to believe, Captain Von Trapp, you Singing in a concert? Arizona, you may choose to believe what you wish. It doesn't say here what you're going to be singing. What are you going to sing, Captain? It would be your privilege to come to the concert and hear. Well, I'd like to hear you sing right now. Sing what you're going to sing in the concert. Sing. Do re mi fa sol la ti li so, please give us a do. Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. Me a babe, I call myself. Fa a long, long way to run. Clean 
and bright. You look happy to meet me. Blossom of snow, may you bloom and grow, bloom and grow forever. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, bless my homeland forever.
And now the second award is given to Fräulein Schweiger, the first soloist of St. Agatha's Church in Nürnberg. <laughs> The church has always been a sanctuary. But not with these people. This is the third time they've searched the Abbey. What's that? That's why we put you out here in the garden. They always search inside, never outside. Isn't this God's house? Shh, yes, darling. Please, children, be very, very quiet. We'll let you know when they've gone. Once they've gone, can we go home? I'm afraid we have a very long drive ahead of us. Think so. Let's all stay together. Lieutenant! Nothing out here, sir. All right. Come along. safe, we'll start out. We've hidden a car deep in the woods. Oh, the car will do you no good. They placed a guard on the road in front of the gate. And I've been listening to the wireless. The roads are blocked, and the borders, they're all closed. I used to think of these mountains as my friends, standing there protecting us. Now they seem to have become my enemies. Oh, never your enemies. Not red. I will lift mine eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. Garrick, I know that mountain as well as I know this garden, and so do you. And once we're over that mountain, we're in Switzerland. But the children. We can help the children. Father, we can do it with the owl. But you will have help, for you shall go forth with joy and be led forth with peace. 
The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. 